Welcome back everybody to Volatility Trading Strategies. So in a previous video, I will leave a link up here, I was showing the performance of a very simple strategy that shorts the S&P 500 during VIX futures backwardation. That's a very common signal that people look at. So that video is gonna serve as the baseline. And then today we're gonna continue the conversation by adding several other asset classes as well and testing those. So as all of us in the volatility space know, the VIX futures go into backwardation during periods of elevated market risk and uncertainty. Now they only go into backwardation on roughly 16% of trading days, so it's not that often. But every single time the markets crash, it will show up in the VIX futures. All of these periods you see where the VIX futures are negative, the market was doing something ugly at that time. And because of this, what a lot of people out there think is that all they have to do is wait for those VIX futures to go into backwardation, and then they short the stock market and make a bunch of money. But in that last video, I showed that while that does sound good in theory, in actual practice, it wouldn't work at all. In fact, that trader would have lost over half their money following that simple strategy. And there's two things that is causing all of the losses. The first is what I call the slow bleed. This happens every time the futures only temporarily dip into backwardation. This means the trader is getting short the market just as it's starting to recover, and you get whipsawed over and over again. Small paper cuts each time, but they really add up in the long run. And the second reason is what I call the dreaded giveback. This happens after the major crashes, where for a while the trader will definitely be making some money as the market is tanking. But the problem is, the VIX futures can remain in backwardation long after the market has bounced and started going up again. This can lead the trader to give back some or even all of the previous gains. Essentially, the signal that gets you into the profitable trade to begin with is the same signal that keeps you in it for too long afterwards. So clearly shorting the S&P 500 during VIX futures backwardation doesn't work at all. We've established that. So now in this video, I'm going to show you several other asset classes like bonds, gold, utilities, the US dollar, even long volatility ETPs like VXX. And we're going to see if we can find a few that might have performed a little bit better during those periods of elevated market risk. And I do put in quite a bit of time putting these videos together to help you become a better investor. So if you wouldn't mind, give the video a like for me and definitely share it with somebody you think might also be interested in this type of analysis. All right, so we've got nine other ETFs to get to here, so I really do need to dive into the data. But if you want a further explanation on what VIX futures backwardation actually is and what it means for the market, there is a video linked here. That 20 minute video is gonna get you completely up to speed. All right, so we're gonna fill out this list of 10 ETFs to test how they perform during VIX futures backwardation. And then at the end, I'll summarize them and share what I feel are the top three performers. If nothing else, this might give you some ideas to apply to your own investing. So number one, and believe it or not, this isn't even the worst one I'll show you today, but it's that same baseline example of short the S&P 500 through the SPY. Like I said, this is terrible and I don't expect this strategy to ever work out. The slow bleed and the dreaded giveback will all but guarantee the trend remains down long term. But if shorting the S&P 500 during backwardation is this bad, what about being a contrarian and actually going long the S&P 500 during backwardation instead? Well, doing the opposite, of course, will now have a positive return long term with a compound annual growth rate of 2.17% per year. That's not a lot, but remember, VIX futures are only in backwardation about 16% of the time, so we shouldn't expect much. 2% a year on 16% of trading days is actually pretty decent. The big issue, however, is that those drawdowns are just way too large for any rational investor to be able to sustain. Unfortunately, most investors out there wildly overestimate their own risk tolerance. Sometimes they'll look at a back test and they'll think, well, as long as the results are positive, all I really have to do is hang on and eventually it'll recover. But then that drawdown happens in real time with their own money and they quickly realize that their risk tolerance wasn't nearly as big as they thought it was and they quit. So even though there are some periods of good success here being a contrarian, the drawdowns are way too large and any rational investor has long since pulled the plug and quit doing this. We need to do better and I think the logical first choice is with bonds. So this would be holding the TLT during VIX futures backwardation. Now the TLT is long-term US treasuries, and it's very often the go-to holding for people when the stock market may be at risk of crashing. As we can see, it does pretty well. Positive long-term return, 1.63% a year on just 16% of trading days. 
and a maximum drawdown of about 21%, which is probably closer to a realistic drawdown that investors can suffer and continue to maintain a strategy. Anything more than that, and most investors will be looking for the exit. So there's no doubt that bonds are significantly better than stocks when market volatility is elevated. So as a general safety position, bonds work pretty well. But what about gold? This is even more promising. Positive return, fairly consistent long term, and the maximum drawdown is still within reason. Now, I'm not suggesting that investors are going to just buy and hold this and literally do this during VIX futures backwardation. Obviously, this can be improved upon with some additional filters. But to test things, we do need baselines, and so far, gold is the best we have. Now let's get into the interesting one, long volatility. There's a lot of traders out there that think when the VIX futures go into backwardation, that's the time to strike and get into those long volatility positions. And again, in theory, this does make sense. That roll yield in the VIX futures term structure would be helping the trade at that point. And if the markets crash, then big money should be made. Unfortunately, the very same problem that plagues the short S&P 500 position is amplified even worse here with long VXX. Sure, there's periods of great success when you really do catch one of those big declines, but the slow bleed of whipsaw plus the dreaded give back when everyone buys the dip and the markets bounce, that's extremely punishing on a position that has a beta factor to the S&P 500 of about 2.4 times. That means it works great when you get lucky with the timing, but it can be devastating when you don't. Long term with a 90% drawdown, obviously you're going to want to be very careful with those long volatility positions. And you're going to need a whole lot more evidence of a market crash beyond just the VIX futures being in backwardation. All right, so here's another interesting one. This is a utilities ETF called VPU. There's also XLU. It's basically the same thing. But the reason utilities are interesting is that outside of the very biggest market crashes, the 2008 financial crisis and the global pandemic, aside from those, utilities are more consistent than the broad S&P 500. And that's important information to keep in mind. Now, a 38% drawdown is obviously far too much, so additional layers of protection will need to be taken. But there is potential here to smooth out some of those market crashes. This one here will probably surprise a few people. This is the IYR, which is a real estate ETF, and the results are clearly terrible. The 70% drawdown makes it a complete non-starter, of course, but even outside of that, there really isn't very much to build on here. Additional filters would help, but not enough to close the gap to some of the other asset classes. Next on the list is DBC, which is a broad commodities ETF. And as bad as real estate was, this one is even worse. I see nothing at all here of any interest for traders. Either long or short, there's really nothing to see here. There's no way anybody could argue that simple cash isn't far superior in a crisis. This one, the UUP, is the US dollar ETF. And while the results don't look overly impressive, there's actually something here in my opinion because I believe cash is an active portfolio position. Investors sometimes feel that holding cash is just for when you don't know what you're doing. But sometimes cash is the best position. Sometimes sitting on your hands and doing nothing ends up making you the most money. So when we're looking for things that may behave similar to cash, but potentially provide a little bit of positive return as well, things like the UUP here become interesting. At least something to put on your list of potential positions to test further. Now this last one that I'll talk about before summarizing them all is actually the best performer of the bunch, and that is emerging markets. The EEM, with a 6.84% annual return, has the best absolute return of the bunch by far. For only 16% of trading days when VIX futures were in backwardation, this is very high. Now that massive drawdown should give anybody some serious pause, but at the very least it's interesting that emerging markets for the most part would have done so well. Again, just another one to throw on the list for all of you tactical investors, those who are always looking for potential ways to mitigate risk. So we've got 10 ETFs, only holding during VIX futures backwardation, covering many different asset classes. This is pretty messy to look at in a chart, but let's try to rank these and see which ones have the most potential. So in my opinion, number one will be gold. It has one of the higher returns, but also with drawdowns that are fairly manageable, especially with a few additional filters to narrow down the trades even further. Number two, and not that far off gold, is long-term treasuries through the TLT. Again, the return is decent, but it's that lower drawdown number that really makes it a viable choice for safety positions. If stocks are going to be crashing 30 to 50% every recession cycle, we do need some assets that will likely go down less than that. Now, my number three best probably isn't the one you're thinking. You probably thought that emerging markets with that very high return number would have ranked higher. But actually, a lot of my work is dependent on having a very good understanding of all the intercorrelations between asset classes, and especially during crisis. 
Emerging markets may work well most of the time, but there is that potential for a serious breakdown in correlations. And for me personally, I'd rather not make any money than risk losing too much. So for me, my number three rank here is actually utilities. We can expect larger drawdowns than with gold or bonds, but with a more expansive list of volatility metrics to filter down these trades even further, we can still get very good trading results using utilities. Our VTS tactical balance strategy does use both treasuries and gold as safety positions when it's too risky to hold stocks. And the leveraged version of that same strategy does as well. Gold and treasuries can help a trader dramatically reduce drawdowns in a crisis. And our defensive rotation strategy uses bonds and utilities as the safety positions. And then we do have the leveraged version of that strategy as well for those with higher risk tolerance. But gold, treasuries, and utilities are my top three. Beyond that, as I said, the US dollar index, UUP, it does have potential as well as a possible cash replacement, but I would rank it a little bit lower than the other three. Then we get down to the ones that really don't add any value at all as far as tactical safety positions. Correlations break down, drawdowns can be massive, and even with additional filters, these are all hard to make work within a long-term strategy. Now, just a caveat here, at ultra-high levels of market risk, we know the VXX can provide some explosive returns. About 2-3% to of the time, my volatility strategies can dip a toe in the long volatility pool. But just know that the whipsaw for VXX trading when you're wrong can be more extreme than anything else on this list by far. You'll want to be very, very careful with that one and only bring it out when all the metrics are aligned. We can expand on this list in the future, of course, because there's many other volatility metrics and ways to filter out those trades to get even better results. All of that was just the baseline for future conversations. We use a lot of these metrics within the VTS community. So if you want to see some of our trades, you can head on over to my website. There is a free trial on there. You can see our portfolio and see if it's a good fit for your long term goals. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much for watching the video. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel and go check out my website right here. There's tons of articles and videos on there, as well as a free trial to join the VTS investing community. What have you got to lose? Come see how I personally navigate these unruly markets. See you next time.